I'm, lo I'm so looking forward to this. Hello, everybody. My name is John Matos, my friend Matt Snipes. And uh, we're going to dive into the wonderful world of Boy Meets World. For those of you who don't know, a uh, spin-off of Boy Meets World recently premiered on Disney Channel. And um, much to my chagrin, it's not anywhere near as good as the original series, but my friend here, who grew up on such classics as Predator and uh, Alien and, you know, 90s action movies, I was, while he was busy doing that, I was busy watching 90s sitcoms, and uh, they're sort of the bane of Matt's existence. So, um, I'm using this opportunity, this platform, if you will, to introduce Matt to Boy Meets World. Before we get started, uh, Matt, would you like to say a few words? Thank you so much. Is there anything that you... What do you expect from this series? Have you seen any of it? What do I expect? I expect to be driven to a homicidal rage. It ends up on the 6 o'clock news. That's what I expect. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I hate everything about this. <laughs> do you expect it to be like like Full House bad? Or... Because you like Urkel. He likes Family Matters. Can it reach that sort of thing? You I, think? I don't know how I feel about Family Matters. Yeah. I feel like I'm more nostalgic about that show than anything else. Right. And I, I will admit there is a nostalgia factor. Like, I grew up with sisters who watched... Like, I would watch this and I would also watch, like, Sailor Moon. I'll admit it. I'll admit it. Sailor Moon is at least anime. And that, that took effort and creativity. <laughs> I was more just like mesmerized by it. Like I was just like, what's what's going on here? Like I had no idea. Like she's every you day. Every day she cries about like getting an A on it, like an A minus on a test. You didn't. You didn't. You tell me you didn't. You didn't. You didn't, you didn't, you didn't, you didn't that, that, that's all, folks. You tell me you didn't secretly want to be Tuxedo Rose. Tuxedo mask. First of all. Tuxedo mask. What? Second. I was, he threw I was, roses I was just all the like, time. He might as well been called Tuxedo Rose. I was just like, oh great, there's actually a male character on this show. American Finally. Flamboyant, feminine male But like, character. I never really thought like, why am I watching this show? I just figured, it's on TV, I have nothing to do. Let me watch it. Um, and then there was like, uh, Step by Step, which I would only really enjoy, like, every now and again. It was a very like, you know, the, the one family was very like, liberal and like, you know, artsy party and stuff, and the other family was like blue collar sort of dad and stuff like that. And so, every now and again, there would be like one of the girls that would like, there would be a man that would like, you know, go too far with them or something, and then like a guy would just like, all of a sudden, it would be like, it would turn into like a karate movie. Like it would go into like Chuck Norris sort of thing, where all of a sudden there would be a choreographed fight, and they would just like beat him up, and that was, that was awesome to watch. But otherwise, that that was just like, it was sort of like Boy Meets World Light. They would go into some stuff, but really, I think Boy Meets World is one of the best of the 90s sitcoms. It's not as good as Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Um, I think that's probably the best, but I really like it, and I think Matt will at least feel better about it by the end of this. So, without further ado... The pilot episode of Boy Meets World. Kill me now. You're being detained from whatever it is you'd rather be doing. Well, I think it's a cruel and unusual life-sucking torture. <laughs> You've captured the essence. And we're back. Hi, it's uh, graphicallyfriction.com writers and artists Jonathan Matos and Matt Snipes. Back from watching the pilot episode of Boy Meets World. What does he think? Alright, officially I'm gonna ask you. Do you like it anymore? Or do you respect it anymore? Did you say anything? <laughs> is it like fire in the hole? <laughs> I'm not thinking, just waiting for my waiting for oh! the, the cap to blow off here. Yes. Okay. Do you like it anymore? No. Any of the aspects? No. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> uh, 
I None of their characters. I know. All I knew, of their characters. I knew it. You're like, if he just watches an episode, if I can just get him to sit down and see an episode, he'll see it. He'll see the true We've value. We've lost him. We've lost him. <laughs> Call it. You're like... DOA! Like, like that, um, that girlfriend who, who gets, like, the bad boy. I can change him. I can... You know, I know he's a bad guy, but, you know, I can turn him around. Yeah. And John's like, I, I know... spent 24 years in prison, but <laughs> I'm gonna be the one. I know you grew up on a... You grew up on a digest of, uh... Or digest? A diet of, <laughs> of violence and just insanity. But I can... I can turn him around with some wholesome... Some wholesome family sitcoms. Nope. All right. So you don't... Okay. None of the themes, none of the characters. Okay, so what do you what do you not like about it, then? We're gonna go I might like Mr. Us. Feeny, but it seems by far he's portrayed to be the villain in the show, uh, so... Uh, I like the bad guy, I guess. He's an anti-hero. Not really. No, well, like, I guess, yeah, he's the, he's the antagonist. He is yeah. the force that uh, Corey is pushing against. It's the main, I guess the main thesis is that Corey is a character who is, doesn't want to learn, basically. He doesn't want to, you know, expand from his, like, sort of naive way of looking at life. And that Mr. Feeney is there to broaden the way he thinks. But what's interesting about it is that it's sort of like he's joining the dark side. Like, the whole point is that he does expand his mind. And so... <laughs> I see. I knew you're, you like it more. Or respect. I respect it more because of part of the message. That Wait, particularly yeah. the, the the thing about love, speech at the end. Uh -huh. She seemed very well articulated, very well put together. Instead of just the standard Hollywood packaged message in movies or TV these days, just, just believe in love, and love will always get you through. Right. It's like that's it's naive. Well, yeah, it's really it's really cliche, and I think that was one thing you said too to quote him. Is that like the the mom character, the, the parents? You got a little older, you had a bunch of friends, and you were more interested in throwing the football around with them. Wait a minute, it sounds like you're saying I'm the bad guy. No, honey, there's no bad guy. All I'm saying is that it's natural that people grow up and priorities change. The writing in general is it's, it's a clever, it may be some of the same like morals and some of the same structure as other. Um, as other sitcoms of the 90s, but I think the, the clever writing and like some of the weediness and I think the timing of the actors makes makes it work a little bit more. Uh, yeah, I mean, the thing with this show is I feel like I would have liked it a lot better if it's not, if it wasn't about 11 year old grade schoolers. Uh -huh. Like, the, 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 the sorts of message that the Feeney character has towards the end, that's not really something that comes up a lot in today's television. Mm -hmm. today's, today's television, when it comes to dealing with complex issues like love and sacrifice and, and all sorts of stuff like that, it mainly just glosses over them and just focuses on feelings, mm -hmm. you know? And once the feeling is gone, then you cut yeah. the ties and go. Yeah. And this seems like it has a lot more depth than that, but at the same time, he's talking to an 11-year-old right. who even in the show, doesn't really get it, but gets that some important point is being made, but doesn't really understand. Well, it's, it's I think one thing really I can like. compare it to is sort of like, uh, the reason why I like certain comics is because it's taking what is essentially true and just breaking it down to a very simple, like a very simple way of showing it. Another, another example would be like the Peanuts cartoons, where it's like, there's these very like simple messages, and they have this heightened reality where all, there are all these like technically like ten year old, maybe like ten year old kids that are that talk like they're adults. Mom, hmm? you're always very cordial to me when I lived here. <laughs> and it's showing very complex things, and so kids are sort of working to understand like some heightened dialogue, uh, but it's still very simple messages. And so I feel like this is sort of the same thing, is that, like, there, there's this character who is, like, a, a, a sort of Darth Vader-like teacher who is sort of, like, you know... And, and I think it, it gets... I mean, for, for a while there, it sort of reverses at the end because um, Corey thinks that he sees that uh, Mr. Feeney is eating alone 
and like he brings that up to him and all of a sudden he gets really defensive and then that's when the love speech comes from and I thought that that was it was very sort of dark because it's like you know it, it seems like his speech is coming more out of anger than out of concern for Corey um, so like the, the way that he says it the way that it's framed is a very sort of like you know well this is how life works sometimes well, the but thing you, is, still, you should still stick with it. The impactful part of Feeney's speech is that he's, he's, not that he's angry, but that he's frustrated. And this little kid who's given up on love, uh -huh. who has 11 years old, really has no concept of what love is. Right. And he brings up his own personal life, how he, but the, the, the main inspiring thing about Feeney's speech and all this was the idea that even though he was just spurned and rejected by love, he and instead of taking the easy route of just like rejecting all love, saying like I'm, I hate love is useless, love is for idiots, and I'm never going to get on that, I'm never going to do it again. He still believes in it, even after he's been basically spurned by it, even after it's basically caused him pain, it's basically done him wrong. Because at one time a man and a woman realized that they loved each other and pursued the unlimited potential of what may come from that love. And here you are. Last person you would expect to be leaving in love right now, and he's still holding on right. to it. And that's just, that was either very impactful, very important, but then you stick to the end of the credits, and it turns out it was just his sister who stood him up. Right. And it, it devalues the whole thing. Because here's a guy who he's, I mean, it, it's like, in fact, he wasn't spurned by love at all, so it's kind of easy for him to keep believing in it, even right. though he wasn't just... And I think that's actually something that I think is what my my dad, who liked the earlier shows but then didn't like the later shows, is that, like, it, it is at a constant um, balance between what are we going to do to be clever and what are we going to do to have a more complex conversation in a sitcom. And I feel like it there is such... The elevation of that dialogue, the elevation of some of the gags that it has, is so good that when it does have a little cheap, like laughing things like that, that it devalues it. Um, but I feel like, like it's sort of like what we were talking about before with somebody like Stanley or C.S. Lewis, is that they're elevating a genre to the point where it doesn't really bother me as much when it does have something cheap like that because when when I'm stuck. When it's a choice between that or Full House, I was like, well, I'd rather watch one than Twiddle. I'd rather watch neither. <laughs> Apparently. So, that's that's all we have for you today. Uh, we've appreciated your viewing, and uh, if you want to check out more of our writing, blogs, and creative thingamajigs, you can find that at graphicallychristian.com. I'm John. I'm Matt. The next episode... <laughs>